I would like to continue by just giving you a quick overview of the timeline and the composition panels. So let's go ahead to the project panel, click on the Beach One composition and delete it. Confirm the delete. There you go. Now we have all four of these files. Let's go ahead and select them all and drag them to the new composition icon at the bottom of the project panel. Leave all of these settings as they are. Make sure that Sequence Layers is not selected and click OK. The first thing that I would like to go over is how this actually works. Please notice that there are numbers here. These are time code numbers. These numbers indicate where the CTI, also known as Current Time Indicator, where this line is in the timeline. The Composition panel is showing you the frame that the CTI happens to be parked on. In other words, this number and this number here in the project panel will always agree because they refer to the same thing. They refer to the position of the CTI. Next, let's talk about what these icons are. The first icon is the eye icon that toggles the visibility of the layer. In other words, if I want to make the top layer invisible, all I need to do is click there, the eye disappears, which means that the layer becomes invisible. I can also mute the sound of any particular layer. None of these actually have sound information, so it's grayed out. The third icon here is the solo icon. This is the equivalent of making all of the layers invisible and leaving just that one visible very convenient. Next to that is the lock. Basically you can't change any properties of a layer that is locked. In other words, the lock has one purpose and that is to save you from yourself. Next to that we see a labels column. Depending on what type of file you're using, After Effects is going to assign a particular label color to it, but you can change it. In other words, if you click on this particular swatch, you can choose a different color and notice that it not only affects it here, but in the timeline side of things as well. Next to that, we have the layer stacking order. Whomever layer is on top, and I can switch the layer stacking order, that one will be layer number one. This is very important because how layers work is like this. Whomever layer is on top is the layer that you're going to see first. If the layer happens to be smaller, like I'm making this one smaller here, then you see other layers where that layer is not. But the layer that is on top, layer number one, is the one that you see first. Let's go ahead and undo that. Your best friend in After Effects is Undo. The shortcut for Undo is Control or Command Z. So undo it again, and there you go. Next to that, we see the source name. This is the name that that particular file has in the project panel. If you click on the words source name, you will see that there is also a layer name parameter. You can change the names of the layers here in the timeline in After Effects. All you need to do is select a layer, Press the Enter key on the PC or Return key on the Mac and type in the new name. Next to that, we have the Shy Layer icon. These, by the way, are known as the switches. The Shy Layer icon makes layers invisible here in the timeline, but not in the composition panel. So it's kind of, sort of, the inverse of the solo layer. Let me go ahead and explain that a little bit better. I'm going to resize these layers here so that we can see all of them. I have four of them, so I'm just going to position them, one on each corner. By the way, as you resize, if you want to keep the aspect ratio of the layer intact, Press and hold the Shift key. There you go. 